All right, let's do a completely manual registration in this project. So let's call it completely manual, meaning we will only import our data Okay, we'll do processing. We will process everything together, but we will tell the program not to search for targets. So all of these filters, uh, maybe this one we will reduce down to 350 or something, because this was a 500 foot scanner or range or scanner with 500 feet. So 350 would be enough. I will tell it not to find spheres and I will tell it not to perform registration. So all it will do is run a couple of filters, create scan point clouds and be done with it. Okay, so we are now processed. Needless to say, you see that there's no scan manager, which means if I go into explore tab, you will see that none of the, these scans were actually placed. They are arbitrarily placed somewhere based on a GPS location, which is not very accurate. So there we go. So in order to do a manual registration, what you do is you will have to go and pick targets in each one of the scans and do it manually but what I'll do is I will show you two ways of doing it and for that we will create two clusters so we'll create a cluster called target and then I'll do another cluster called no targets And because I know the adjacency of these is driven by uh, the linear scanning where we went from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, I'll, again, this is just to show that this is possible. I'll just uh, highlight these two and I'll say, let's use targets for these guys. And I'll highlight these two and use no targets for these guys. So in the sense of keeping everything clean, that folder is actually, or cluster is now empty, so we can actually delete it. So let me hit delete. Are you sure? Yes. And now let's do this. So for the sake of the exercise, we broke them up into, we broke the project that contains four scans into two clusters, and we will essentially merge these two together, then these two together, and then once they are merged together, we will merge these two guys together as if they were single scans. So let's delve into the target. I like to visualize my scan in the planar view. So I'll go into this view, wait for the program to respawn, load the scan, and start identifying targets manually. I know we have targets on the ground here, so I'll just zoom in on it. And in this pull down menu, uh, click my mark sphere button, I'll click it as long as I have enough points. And there's 145 points that actually fell on the surface of that very sphere that's in front of me. Uh, the, the little signal light or the traffic light changes to green, meaning it was close enough for the software to be able to figure out that it was a sphere 
based on the 145 uh, points, it was able to figure out that it was the sphere that has the radius of, mm, it, this happens to be the 0 0.0725 meter sphere, but in feet, that's what that value is. So we'll just hit OK. Drag on somewhere else. There's another sphere. It's a little further. So let's see if that gets recognized. Yes, it did get recognized. Fewer points fell on its surface, but it's still OK. We have a little bit of a light or a, a yellow light on this thing. So it says, well, next time you do scanning with these settings, maybe you want to be a little closer. Same thing happens over here. 90 points fell on the surface of this sphere. So once again, happy. And as far as I'm concerned, I think that's it. I don't think we had any more targets in this view. So let me close it. Let's do the same thing here. So we'll do planar view. And once again, we're only marking these manually because we didn't do processing. And the, in that processing, we didn't specify that we want to find targets automatically. So once again, we're here. We'll mark this guy, 50 points. That's relatively OK. 398 points. 518 points. And let's say we have more targets here. There is another sphere here, but this is too far. And you'll notice if it's too far, it'll try to and incorrectly identify possibly random objects elsewhere. And this is definitely wrong, so I'll hit delete. I'll try again, maybe. And the program actually said, OK, it cannot find a sphere here. So that's just too far. That would be an indication. If that was something that you uh, relied on, you would want to scan with the target being closer the next time if you're out in the field and trying to do this. So that's a target. I think that's it. I don't think we had any more in this view. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, we have identified all the common targets between these scans. What we can go do now is we can go into registration. And in the, this cluster where we created um, the objects in scan one and scan two, which were the spheres, let's hit the auto registration. We'll do a top target based registration in this case, just hit register. We can see that the data came together. We can actually see the report saying, oh, we're only a millimeter and almost quarter off, which is perfect. Hit OK. If I go back into my Explore tab, it's now trying to show me both um, clusters together, but we know only the second cluster, which is this one, is actually registered. So I can close this view and just view it in 3D uh, in an isolated fashion. But we should be able to see that we went from wherever we are to wherever you went afterwards, and it looks like it's OK. Once again, I want to do a little bit of checking, see that the spheres are round, nothing's crazy, and it looks like everything's working OK. And my results that I saw before are in, again, in a little spreadsheet that you can kind of see that the three spheres that we used to tie the two scans together were recognized to a accuracy of about a millimeter and a quarter here. So I'm happy. All right. So this is done. Let's do some registration on the second cluster here, which still is not working because we haven't initiated the registration process. So you see that there's a scan here and a scan here, which are completely misaligned. And what I can do is instead of doing targets, and that's what the name of the cluster is, I can actually run an automatic registration on it. And we can do a top view and a cloud to cloud. You can do it in two steps, or you can just do it all at once. So let's just do it very quickly, do a top view and a cloud to cloud on these two. And what we'll do is the program will look into both scans, load them up into memory, and see if it can automatically line them up. And again, 
depending on the size of the project and the number of points that you have in each scan, it may take minutes or hopefully not hours, but a couple of minutes. Okay, so once again, we get results that we can verify. You can see that the two scans lined up within about a millimeter, almost two millimeters, which I'm super happy about again. I'll hit finish. And now if I go into my explore tab, we will have two clusters that are not aligned to each other yet, but are working individually. So if I view my 3D data on the cluster called no targets, whereas before it was misaligned, now it is aligned properly. Again, I didn't use any targets, so I won't have any actual target data in my scan manager. So my scan manager just tells me how much overlap there is and what the expected mean error throughout the two scans and the number of points that it was trying to match to themselves, so 27,935 points. Uh, we're happy with that. Again, it looks like everything worked, but now we have to decide how do we want to merge this cluster with this cluster. It can be done with targets because we happen to have targets, but let's do it without targets. So, once again, We'll do, we'll create the brand new cluster and we'll call it combined or whatever you want to call it. This, the, the naming really doesn't matter. But I'll take this cluster and move it in here. I'll take the target cluster and move it in here. And now when I expand my combined cluster, I have now these two that kind of resemble a single scan, even though we know that they contain two scans here and two scans over here. But as far as the program's concerned, as long as, as, long as we have a locked uh, icon on the scan manager here and a locked icon on the scan manager over here, I can run registration. Just like you see, it, the program lets me do an auto registration between these two clusters. I'll hit OK, start registration. Once again, We'll just let the program take the brunt of most of the work. So we'll do top view and cloud to cloud on this thing and see if the software can figure out the placement. So let's hit start registration and again, wait a couple of minutes and see if it actually works. If you do target based registration, you'd be already finished because it, instead of it trying to match thousands of points to thousands of points or hundreds of thousands of points to hundreds of thousands of points, you'll be matching just your target, so that might be two or three or four targets combined with two or three or four targets from the next cluster. Let's see what the software was able to do. Looks like it pulled everything within about five millimeters. So let's accept this and let's look at it. And now we're actually looking at the whole, everything, all scans combined together. And if I'm happy with the fit, which I am, I can just sign off on it by either saving it or doing the cleanup or doing anything else. But essentially, as far as registration, I am finished with it. I can bring in more scans if I want to import and actually work on those or just finish project, hit the save button and close it.